Telepath Tactics Liberated was made by a solo developer for the most part and it shows. The presentation is beyond simplistic, some of the assets are very crude looking and I can understand it being a turn off to a lot of people. But if you are truly into strategy RPGs, there is a good reason to consider playing this game. That is the gameplay itself. And that's the most important aspect in a video game, right? Well, let's find out as we review Telepath Tactics Liberated. Welcome, this is Reviews from the Void. Full disclosure, the developer reached out to me and offered a review copy of this game, but I am not getting paid for the review, so these are my own thoughts about it. This review is based on the Steam version 1.0.22 and this game is so far only available on Steam. So let's analyze Telepath Tactics as we score it. Here we go. Graphics and Sound I don't want to be rude, but I don't want to beat around the bush either. It is what it is, Telepath Tactics Liberated looks bad. And not just for today's standards, this would be criticized just the same 20 years ago. The main problem are the in-game assets, like tables and chairs and such. I mean, look at this. What is this tilted angle for the furniture? <laughs> what? I mean, it makes it look like not even an ounce of effort was put into it. I realize that game development is much harder than it looks and criticizing something is too easy, but come on. The character sprites are a bit better and they're somewhat well animated, so it's not all terrible, but it's hardly a redemption. Then there are the character portraits. And listen, in my reviews, graphics go from 0 to 1, right? I'm just gonna tell you right now, this game gets a 0.2 out of 1 for graphics. And that 0.2 is mostly all from character portraits, which I realize you may be thinking, well, what? That looks terrible too. Well, that may be true, some of them really do, but at least they have personality. And if it weren't for that, the game would have no graphical traits to create an identity with. And it was surprising to me that I actually grew attached to some of the better looking portraits. In the music department, this gets a 0.5 out of 1. The music is fine, some tunes are actually great, most are are just okay, the sound effects are all good too, except for the character dialogue muttering, I mean listen to it. Yeah, the Banjo-Kazooie style gibberish really doesn't fit the tone of the game in any shape or form in my opinion, but there is an easy fix for this, you can turn them off in the options. But still, it's not what you want, right? So there we have it. In graphics and sound, Telepath Tactics Liberated gets a 0.7 out of 2. Gameplay and Challenge Thank god we are in this section now, cause this game has an actually excellent gameplay. There's a clever and well implemented tactical feature that permeates the entire game and feels great when playing it. Unfortunately, this game can't catch a break, it doesn't translate well into words I think. But trust me, it's great. In Telepath Tactics, there is a whole environmental system that allows all characters to interact with pretty much anything around them. From very early on, many characters can push and pull other characters characters, which can be used to make allies reach farther on their turn, or against enemies pushing them into walls, each other, or into traps and water, where they will lose turns on top of taking damage. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Classes like the Engineer can build walls and bridges, Cryokineticists can do the same turning water into ice, all manner of objects in the environment can be destroyed, and they all have their own weaknesses based on logic, if it's made of wood, an axe blow or a fire spell will likely destroy it in one hit. The more acrobatic characters like the assassins can leap over obstacles, some creatures can fly over them, it's a very deep system of abilities that introduces infinite possibilities to be used strategically in combat, and the resulting sensation when using them is fantastic. Other than that, the battles are typical strategy RPG style, if you played Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics, you know exactly what to expect here. Outside of battles, however, the game 
game is a bit too streamlined. The player has no freedom to do anything outside of what is already scripted. You can even choose to visit a market at your own will. The game will present the opportunities to buy and sell when it wants. It's not up to you. This has two opposing consequences. The game becomes too one note in terms of gameplay, it's all about the battles and nothing else, but it also made it possible for the developer to balance the difficulty really well. The challenge in Telepath Tactics Liberated felt on point in the normal difficulty. It was always exciting as they kept introducing new ways to test the player in every new battle, and many times pushing characters to their limits. I lost count on how many times I made it by the skin of my teeth in this game. So overall, gameplay and challenge are extremely positive in Telepath Tactics, deserving a 1.7 out of 2. Bang for Buck In this aspect, once again, Telepath Tactics Liberated falters. For the presentation it has, the full price of $24.99 feels way too high, even though the gameplay is absolutely solid. This narrows down the target audience to only hardcore tactics fans, which may have been the intention all along, so I get it, but a lot of people in that audience will still be put off by the graphics enough not to want to pay this much. Again, Telepath Tactics really presents great gameplay for fans of the genre, so it's up to you how much you value that or not, but I can't give it a great score because of the high price. It does have a lengthy campaign though, taking around 15 hours to finish, and there is even a campaign editor in this game, so you can create and play creations from the community, so this helps out the score a lot. It gets a 0.8 out of 2 in this one. Next is The Sauce where we analyze the less tangible aspects of a game, those that bind everything else together, giving the game its own identity. Let's start with the negatives here. I was not too fond of the story in Telepath Tactics. It's not a bad one by any means, it's about fighting for freedom and trying to save a loved one, but the writing wasn't particularly great and failed to get me invested in it. The cutscenes made the problems with the presentation we talked about too glaring, so that didn't help at all. Also, the non-human characters design were really uninteresting to me, either lacking creativity or just looking absolutely far-fetched. Another problem was a basic one. While shopping, you can't clearly see which characters can equip what unless you learn all the names of the characters and can spot them on the long list of names with surnames. I mean, a more visual aspect like it's usual in RPGs was sorely missed here. Now for the positives, the environmental system provided in the gameplay would be of no value or could even be a damaging aspect if the level design didn't complement it. It's clear to see that the levels were tailor-made to allow for the best possible use of the environmental interactive abilities that are introduced as you progress. Soon after you get the engineer, a whole stage will take place on a bridge. The leap ability of the assassin is a perfect fit for a tight fight inside a bar, where he can jump over tables and chairs and reach enemies with ease. The golem is perfect for crowded battles where your team is outnumbered 4 to 1 and it goes on and on. Since there are no overly complicated features, the planning and executing phases of the strategy complement each other very well, and in tougher stages, if you fail, changing one or two characters on your team will usually completely turn the ties in your favor. The freedom of choice is fantastic inside battles, especially because the progression in this game is expertly done, with your characters always learning interesting new abilities, so building your team in this game is the the coolest thing, really. The number of classes and abilities here is staggering too, but without really feeling overwhelming at all. It's impressive. So to answer my own question from the beginning, gameplay is still king. Despite the presentation problems and how it affects everything else, playing this game feels so good that I couldn't even remember the negative aspects of the game during a thrilling battle, and there were dozens of them. So I'm happy to give Telepath Tactics a positive 2.8 out of 4 in sauce material, which compensates for a good chunk of the more lacking aspects in the game. And with that, the final score is a solid 6 out of 10. As always, when a game scores below 8, I make sure to be clear that in my reviews, anything above a 5 is positive, with a 6 being far from a bad time, especially for fans of this genre. In the case of Telepath Tactics Liberated, I would highly recommend it for hardcore fans of SRPGs, for the uniquely well-constructed mechanisms it provides. I can't stress this enough. And that's it for the review. Hope you enjoyed, thank you so much for watching, and I hope Hope to see you soon.